was making me smile. I was in there just kind of preparing myself. I was just like, wow, you know, it just, it just sounds, Turn it to a positive. <laughs> sounds like there's a happy uh, crowd of people here um, that, that are excited um, to just be in the presence of the Lord. And I'm telling you just every part of what we do when we gather, um, whether it be that or walking in and everyone's clapping or to the point uh, where we're taking up prayer requests and um, we're able to voice our heart. Um, all of these are part of the community of why we gather. Every part, everything we do is for a reason. It's uh, not just to waste time or let's hear what we, it's, it's, there's just something that happens uh, when we come together. And so I'm always excited uh, when we're gathered here in the house of the Lord. And so tonight, if you do have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me uh, to the book of Mark, chapter number 5. Book of Mark, chapter number 5, verses 1, <clears throat> 1 through 20. Um, is there anybody here that has not heard about the story of the demon named Legion? Anybody here that has not heard of the demon named Legion? That's what we're going to be talking about here tonight. Um, is this particular story found in the word of the Lord. Um, and so I know that uh, the Lord is definitely uh, going to speak and minister into our lives tonight. And so we're going to be in Mark chapter number 5, verses 1 to 20. And if you look at uh, what's taking place in the text here, uh, there's a lot happening uh, within these few days um, that Jesus is walking with his disciples um, just before this time of, of them coming across a legion, they were involved in a storm, and then uh, there's just a lot happening within these few days with Jesus and his disciples, and it just seems like, uh, you know, um, every time they, they turn around, something, something is taking place, something um, that is uh, solidifying Jesus' ministry, a, a, a lot happening. It's kind of like, you ever, you ever been in a situation where, man, it just seems like something's constantly boom, 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 boom. You're like, man, that's how the disciples felt. And so right here, let's go to Mark chapter 5, and I'm going to read here, starting at verse 1. And then I want to pray, and then we will get into um, the, the message of the Lord here. Tonight, the word of the Lord says, And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship immediately, uh, there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs. And no man can bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had often been bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and he worshipped him. And he cried with a loud voice and he said, What have I to do with you, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God that you torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is your name? And he answered, My name is Legion, for we are many. He besought him so much that he would not send him away out of the country. Now there was unto the mountain a great herd of swine feeding, and all of the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. Forthwith Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirit went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. There was about 2,000, and they were choked in the sea. And they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country. They went out to see what had been done. And they had come to Jesus, and they see him that he was, and they come to Jesus and see him who was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind. They were afraid, verse 16. And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that he was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine. They began to pray him to depart out of their coast. And he was come into the ship. He who was possessed with the devil prayed that he might go with him. However, Jesus suffered him not, but said unto him, 
Go home to your friends and tell them how great things the Lord has done for you and has had compassion on you. And he departed and he began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him. And all men did marvel. Uh, let's go before the Lord tonight. Father, we come before you tonight and we're thanking you for your word and for the power of your word, God. Uh, because we know that your word is truth. It is absolute truth, God. Uh, at a time when everybody thinks they have their own truth, I thank you that the standard of your word is absolute truth and we can stand on it. And so tonight, uh, we ask that Holy Spirit, uh, that you would move uh, through your word tonight and that you uh, would find a place uh, within our hearts, within our minds, um, to encourage us, to build us, to strengthen us, uh, to draw us to a place of commitment um, onto your word and onto your kingdom. And so, Father, we love you and we thank you tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And so tonight this is a familiar portion of scripture. Um, and so I want to uh, walk through it and, and kind of draw some, some thoughts from it. Um, it kind of paints the picture. Um, I know that I read it out of the King James Version. And uh, I know the New King James Version is a little bit easier to understand. So in case you're not getting the, the gist of what's happening here, is there's a demon-possessed man um, who is a violent man. And he's living amongst the tombs uh, and, and just living in the wild. And Jesus works his way to the shore and he confronts the man. Jesus casts the demons out of the man. The demons run into the pigs. The pigs run and commit pig suicide, throw themselves off a cliff, and then Jesus um, uh, uh, tells the man, you know, um, the people from the city go to the city to say, hey, what has happened? They come back and they see this man who was once demon-possessed, who is now in his right mind. And Jesus tells the man, now I want you to go uh, into the Decapolis or the place uh, where you can begin to preach and proclaim uh, the goodness of who I am. And he begins to tell them about this testimony. That's kind of in a nutshell what this story represents. And so for us, it can mean one of two things. It could be us who we we were found amongst the tombs. I know that maybe you weren't as bad uh, in condition of this man, um, perhaps. But um, spiritually, you were. Spiritually, you were living amongst the tombs. And spiritually, you were dead. And then Jesus came and knocked on the door of your heart. And he set you free when he brought salvation into your life. And then Jesus puts you in your right mind in a sour. At least he should. At least you should be in your right mind now. You should be saying, okay, man, I've got, I've got some things in order now. And then Jesus wants us to go and to proclaim the goodness of who he is uh, so that people might look at you and say, hey, man, I remember who you used to be, but there's definitely something different about you now. And so I want to take it. Uh, from verse number two, and and just kind of go through this uh, story here and see what we can draw out uh, by the power of the Holy Spirit and see what lessons we can learn and how we can find this particular story um, and use it as a form of application in our own life. And so immediately in verse two, the word of the Lord says, and when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man. Uh, with an unclean spirit. And so immediately we recognize uh, that there is an individual who Jesus comes in contact with, and there seems to be a problem right now. There's a problem with the man. There is a situation with the man. And he is uh, mastered by Satan. He is controlled by Satan. And so <clears throat> I know that when we look at this, I want you to understand this tonight, that as a born-again believer... Um, there still is possession. There still is demonic possession. There still is um, witchcraft and demonic activity. There are people that are possessed today. Um, however, a born-again Christian, this is very important you understand this, a born-again Christian cannot be possessed by the devil. You, you, the devil can um, suggest, he can oppress, he can attack. But he cannot possess, he cannot take possession over you. Because when you come to Jesus, the Holy Spirit resides inside of you. And so the Spirit of God and the Spirit of Satan...
do not reside in the same place. And so possession will happen upon an individual who does not have Jesus Christ. As I read this story, I recognize that a lot of times when we go on outreaches, I don't know if uh, any of you have ever been to Skid Row <coughs> in downtown LA and been on outreaches. We used to do a lot of those uh, back in the day. Now we kind of stay uh, within our community, but there were times when we would literally go to Skid Row early in the morning, we would take food and we would walk up and down the streets. And you do absolutely come across people that are dealing with demon possession. And so as I read this story, it, it, it really brings me to a place uh, of understanding that this stuff happens today. And so Jesus um, had a plan. Jesus had a purpose. This is a man that the Bible says that when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. Now, it, we're not told uh, what has taken place in this man's life that led him to this uh, uh, place in his life where he was controlled by an unclean spirit. And so it's like this, you know, we're, we're born and, you know, we're raised within our homes. And, and then, you know, we never are, are, as a young child, you know what I mean? Uh, people say, what do you want to do when you grow up? You know, and people have these dreams, you know, kids say, I want to be a baseball player, I want to do whatever it happens to be. And you never really hear kids say, yeah, when I grow up, I want to be demon possessed. I want to be out of my mind. I want to, you know, lose my mind and be walking in the street. But what happens along the way of life is sometimes that because of the environment that people are raised in, people will turn to drug addiction. And so let me just tell you this tonight, that uh, uh, drug addiction will open up a gateway for possession into an individual's life. We've seen it. When you see people that are out there on the streets and you see, you know they are possessed. If you have discernment, you can discern in your spirit. You know this person is demon possessed. There is demonic activity happening in their life. If you have that sort of discernment where you're walking around and you can feel it, you can. the Holy Spirit is telling you, he is letting you know what's taking place. And so this Man, I'm sure when he was a young man, this was not his plan. He was probably raised in the community. He was probably raised within whatever village he was a part of. And at some point in his life, through, I don't know, maybe decisions of his own, his own or decisions of his family, he ends up in a position that nobody wants to be around him. He becomes untamable. He becomes the person in the village that when they see him, everybody says, run the other way. And we deal with stuff like that in the times we live in today. A lot of times you can see somebody and they look unsafe and they look dangerous. And if you're a woman, then I would say, you know what, by all means, take the high road and go on the other side of the street. But if you're a man and you find yourself in in a position where you have the ability to confront something like this, I would say, what would Jesus do? Jesus isn't going to run across the street. Jesus isn't going to get away from them and act like they don't exist. As a matter of fact, when everybody else threw this man into the tombs and said, go live in the cemetery. Now understand tonight that the tombs at this time, they did not bury people in the ground. They would, they would cut a hole in the side of the cave, and that would become the tombs. And so the word of the Lord says that this man lived in the mountains and amongst the tombs. This is where he found himself. Society no longer wanted him, but Jesus had a plan. And so I want you to understand tonight that I don't know what you might be dealing with tonight. There was a lot of uh, talk of unforgiveness tonight. And I'm here to let you know the stories of, of God's word are there for a purpose. If God can take somebody that was filled with demons, that was possessed by demons, that was hurting, harming himself, that nobody wanted to be around and establish him and put him in his right mind, I definitely know that God can pull unforgiveness out of your heart and put you to a place where you can walk in forgiveness. Amen. We're going to take a trip today into this cemetery found here in the Word of God. We're going to watch the Lord do 
what no one else was capable of doing. We're going to see him set the captive free and change the condition of a man's soul. What a powerful story that is found here in the word of the Lord. And in verse number three and four, it says, who had his dwelling among the tombs and no man can bind him, no, not with chains, because he had often been bound with chains and fetters and the chains had been pulled off of him and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. There are going to be situations in life that we do not have the power to change, that we do not have the power to control. But all it takes is one move of the master's hand, and it can change an entire circumstance. See, humanity had done everything they could for this man. Prescriptions and psychologists and all the different things, you know, that people try to do today. And all it takes is one touch of the master's hand. It says that his hands and his feet were bound. And we know that through demonic possession comes a form of supernatural strength because the Bible is very clear that this man had the ability to break these things by himself. And so we have this madman that is running around the cemetery. As a matter of fact, he's naked and he's cutting himself. He is hurting himself. He is destroying himself. But Jesus has a plan. He has a purpose. This is the reason why. Remember the storm that happens in Mark chapter number four. There's a storm that takes place as they're making their way across. And the disciples are probably wondering, where, why are we even in the boat right now? Because Jesus was on a mission. He was going to touch this man's life. Today, what does man do to people like this? They build prisons and they build psych wards and, and they have all of these different things on what we need to do with them when all the while we have the answer and his name is Jesus. I know people who have talked to themselves. I know people who have heard voices in their head. I know people who have lost their mind and have found themselves in situations and say, my goodness, what have I done to myself? Only to have an encounter with Jesus Christ and to know that they did not have to be locked up in a psych ward, that that would do nothing for them, but just one moment in the presence of Jesus can change an entire destiny. And that ought to be good news for some of you tonight because some of you think that you have people in your family that are untouchable, that God can never reach, that God can never do anything with. They're so far gone. They are so bound. And you think that the reach of Jesus Christ is too short, that it can't touch that situation. Well, let this story here remind you that nobody is too far. For the plan of God. I personally know in my own life, as far as everyone else was concerned, in a season of my life, I was too far gone. I had already known God and ran from Him and wanted nothing to do with Him. And the life of destruction that I was living as my family watched my life unravel before me we're probably saying, my dad is never going to come back. My dad is going to die in the streets. But Jesus came and he found me. Maybe like he found some of you tonight. Not in my right mind. Running around a mess. 
out of control. And yet Jesus would show up and he had a plan. A plan. The Bible says in verse number five, and always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones. What an ugly picture that paints of somebody running around and hurting themselves, cutting themselves, and, and crying. And man, what, what, what a horrible thing to hear. Imagine having a child of your own who was living in a place like this, self-hatred and self-hurt, screaming, yelling, crying out of control. Wouldn't you like to know that there is hope and his name tonight is Jesus. Lost people act the way they act because they are sinners. This man was only acting the way he naturally knew how to act. He found himself in a position of being powerless against the powers of darkness. In our own power, we can't break any chains. In our own power, we can't be set free. In our own power, we can't be loosened. How do I know? Because I tried. I tried with all my heart to live a life without God. I, I was out to prove that I didn't need God in my life anymore. I got this. I can do this from here on out. Only to find myself in a position of being stuck, being controlled by the enemy, running around like a wild man day and night with no direction. This man would cut himself with rocks. His body is covered with blood and scars. He's filthy. He smells. He's terrifying to look at. And he's running around screaming. Not a prime candidate for the kingdom. Not somebody that really you would think that God would say, hey, there's someone I can use. But that is the most powerful transformation that can be found. Is the worst off an individual can be. The greater God's power is revealed. The greater the turnaround. The more people bring recognition that it truly is the power of God moving in a man or in a woman's life. You don't need medication, psychiatry, a priest, a 12-step program. All you need is Jesus. Amen. And, and here's where people miss that, <clears throat> is they never come to that place of a full surrenderance. And so I, I know a lot of people that have said, oh, I tried that. No, they didn't. They tried religion. They, they came to it with a bunch of steps and thinking if this, 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 you'll get this. Rather than coming to a place of surrenderance and falling before the Lord and building a intimate relationship with God and knowing that when we do that then all you need is Jesus you see Jesus comes with a heart of compassion he loves the unlovable this man was pushed out of the city Everybody feared him, avoided him, and despised him. And Jesus would have 
compassion upon him. And so let me remind you tonight, stop judging people. Stop looking at people and thinking, oh, they're dirty. Oh, I don't want to be near them. Our human nature, we, we act like those that were within the city that pushed them out to the outskirts and said, it's not my problem. But I'm here to let you know that it is our problem. The people that nobody else wants, they are our responsibility. They're not our problem because they're not a problem. They are our responsibility. We are told throughout the pages of Scripture that God has called us to be disciples of Jesus Christ, to be imitators of Jesus Christ, that he is our teacher. We are to learn and we are to live our life according to the way he lived. And so you cannot escape this. I know your humanity and your goody two-shoesness wants to tell you, oh, I don't want to be around that person. They stink. Your sin stank too Amen. when God came and saved you. Yeah. He has called us to rescue. And so I hope you know, what we're talking about here tonight, it's, it's not popular preaching. Most churches will avoid this. They'll disagree with me and say, oh, I'm not going to I'm not going to go that person. The Bible very clearly gives this example. And so maybe tomorrow on the outreach, for those who will find it in their heart to come and live out the Great Commission because the Bible tells us that that's what Jesus commands us to do. So for those of you that make a decision tomorrow to obey the word of the Lord, Amen. if you choose to disobey, you can do that. That's your decision to make. You can disobey and stay home unless you have something to do. That's fine. But if you're just kicking back at home, you can. Remember, yes, I want to say, I just preached. What can you do? In your church, this is your this is your house. God, use me in this house. And so you've been commissioned. And so perhaps you'll get the opportunity. I love it when God gives us the opportunity to live out his word. Because let me tell you, there's a lot of dirty, stinky drug addicts that smell like urine that we witness to, that we minister to. And I wonder if you would be willing to, to go and lay your hands on these people and pray for them and believe that maybe God can deliver them. Amen. I can understand. I can relate. Now, I didn't, I, I was in the street, but not like that. But I can relate. I can understand what it means to be in that situation. And so, thank God that people are willing to be obedient and to let people know that there is hope. There is hope for your life. You don't have to live like this. Now, you have no control. It's not your responsibility to persuade or coerce. It is your responsibility to come, pray, witness, minister, Holy Spirit, be released upon this situation. Holy Spirit, do what only you can do. Because we have no power. It is the power of the Holy Spirit that is able to do that. You know how I know that? Because when I was living my, my life, and there was a lot of well-intended people that made a lot of sense. Made a lot of sense. And I was living in my filth, and it made a lot of sense. But I wasn't hearing it until the Holy Spirit had that appointment set up with me. And when the Holy Spirit has an appointment set up with an individual, there's no stopping what God wants to do. And so I, I wonder, you know, if the Holy Spirit has an appointment set up and you are the individual that's supposed to be a part of that appointment and you didn't show up. 
Oh, imagine that. Imagine that. What, what were you doing? God says, man, when we stand before him in judgment, and what did you do with my son Jesus? Oh, I did. Oh, remember that time that, that you know, I, I, I had you set up to go here, and you decided to stay home and do nothing? Meanwhile, there was an individual out there that I really, I really wanted you to go and minister to. That was going to be the day. That was going to be the day that, uh, luckily, somebody else moved in because God always has a plan. Amen. God's always going to work it out. God's plan is going to be fulfilled with or without us. But when I stand before him, as Poppy said earlier, I want him to say, well done, good and faithful servant. Thank you to my rest. And so this man would find himself pushed out of the town and nobody wanted to be around him. I'm sure the kids were told when you see him run. You know, when, when, when we were growing up, and nothing I'm, I'm proud of, but when we were growing up, I wasn't raised a Christian, but when we would see, we, we, we were mean kids. We, we were mean kids. We would um, jump a lot of people and, jump bombs, throw rocks at bombs as kids. And we would see a bomb and, and we, would, we would kick them, beat them, throw rocks on them. I'm talking 9, 10, 11 year old kids. This is what we did. Uh, you know, and again, I'm not saying that proudly or anything, but the way society looks down on them. And what can we teach our kids? N not, not to go over there and, you know, put themselves, don't, don't teach your kids to go and approach them. But we could teach our kids something different. We can walk with our kids and say, man, you see that guy right there? Why don't, why don't we from right here, why don't we pray? You don't have to call him over here, especially listen to me. If you're, if you're a woman, um, you know, I'm, I'm, be very careful when you're around those, those sorts of things. If you're a man, you know, it's a different situation. Where I know some of you babies can get down to, but, uh, <laughs> you know, us men are a little bit more comfortable in those situations where we're a little bit more vigilant but but we have an opportunity that, that we can raise up our kids and the way we we train and we teach our kids as they're young um, when, when they see something like that you know because I guarantee you this that person that you see that's messed up in the street when they were little it wasn't um, that that wasn't their plan this isn't what they were going to strive for. something happened in life and and, and you know what we need to teach our kids to have compassion for that so as they grow up they can minister to people like that as they grow up they can go and, and, and be a part of, of of getting into community activities to perhaps reach out to these sorts of situations and so jesus it's like jesus going to skid row and immediately this demon comes running up i need it i need it i need to get going here <laughs> uh, and so immediately uh, uh, Jesus is, is confronted the demon comes out and the demon you know it bows down and worships and says what you know what are you here to do why are you here and so um, Jesus starts to confront him and 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 Jesus uh, uh, wants an identification on who you are and he says we are legion for we are many now, Legion is going to represent anywhere between 2,000 and 6,000 demons. Some say around 6,000, but from 2,000 to 6,000 when you're talking about a, a, a Legion of Roman soldiers. And so this is what Legion represented. So you have to understand that this one man, this one man had this many demons that was controlling his life. And so through this, Jesus would then, uh, the, 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 the demons would come and they'd be like, man, you know, Jesus... Uh, what are you here to do with us? And cast us into the swine. That's where you read the story where Jesus cast them into the pigs. And the pigs run down the hillside. They fall into the water. They die. All of a sudden, bacon triples. The cost of bacon triples. Because now the pigs are limited. So now the people that are watching the pigs, they run into town. And they tell the people that own the pigs, hey, now check it out. This is what just took place. You just lost a lot of money. And so the people come, and they're angry. And they come to Jesus and say, you know what, man, go. get. We don't want you here anymore. You're bad for business. Uh, you know, what, what you were doing was good. That's all good and fine. But something very powerful happened during this process. 
The Bible says that when the people came from the town and they worked their way into this Gethsemane area or this uh, Gadarenes area, that this man who everybody knew cut himself and was running around naked and screaming and yelling. There was something different about this man because when they came and they approached him, the Bible says that he was sitting in his right mind. He was clothed. He wasn't running crazy anymore. But let me tell you what he did have still. He still had the scars from the man that he was. Remember, he was cutting himself. He was bleeding. So they recognized this is still the same man, but something different has taken place in his life. And that is the importance of our life tonight, is that people are going to recognize who we are because they can identify us by our person. But when they look at you a little bit closer, they're going to realize there's something different about you. There's something that's changed about your mind and something that's changed about your spirit, your outlook, the way you see things, the way you walk, the way you live, the way you talk, the way you conduct yourself, the way you, everything about you has been transformed. You look like the same person on the outside, but on the inside, something very powerful has taken place. And so I wonder tonight, is that us? Is that us? Does our Family see us, and, and man, it's just so evident. Man, you look like my mom. You look like my brother. Man, you look like my sister. But man, you don't act like that person. Oh, when I knew them 10 years ago, they were a good-for-nothing, drunk, uh, cussing, you know, crazy, out-of-control person. But God is doing something on the inside. Yeah. Jesus on the inside. Transforming us. That's what this man experienced. And that's what we should have experienced. Is that when, when Jesus came and he found us in this same spiritual condition. And so this Father's Day, maybe perhaps you're going to get together with some family members. And it's very important that they look at you. And they say, you, you, you look like him or you look like her. And man, you've got the same features, but man, there's, there's something different in the way you're talking. There's something different in the way you're, man, what, what happened to you? And, and then at that moment, you get to do exactly what Jesus tells this man to do. Go to Decapolis and begin to proclaim about the goodness of who I am. And, and so anytime you have a time of gathering where you're getting together with other people, they're going to look at you and you're going to, you know, look the same. And, you know, uh, we're still carrying some of the same way. Some of us get got heavier with Christianity. I know I did. You know, when I wasn't a Christian, I was a lot bitter, you know, running around. But when I came to the Lord, something happened to my stomach. I don't know what it is, but something happened to my stomach when I gave my life to Jesus. So people are looking and they're saying, you look like the same guy, but man, you, you kind of don't talk like the same. There's something completely different about you. And I'm glad you asked because what has happened is Jesus came and he found me in my filthiness and in my dirt and in my junk. And, and when nobody else wanted me around and nobody wanted to talk to me and everybody hid their purses and their keys and said, I'll take your car for five days and out of town, I ain't even kidding. Don't you let me see your keys. I'll take your car. And act like nothing ever happened. Bring it back and go somewhere else and find someone else's car. When you lived a life like that and everybody nobody trusted you and now all of a sudden you say man, i remember nobody wanted to be around you and oh you were just no good and this and that and man, why 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 are people around you now why is everybody okay leaving their purses around and everything oh i'm glad you asked oh i met a man his name is jesus man, he touched my heart and changed me i don't even you know, have the desire now, you know, God allows this to flow through me and there's this trust and that trust and people trust me with this and this and this and walking around in people's houses with all of these things left out, all these valuables and that's just who Jesus is. He Amen. takes people who couldn't be trusted and he changes our heart and 
we're sitting here like this man who was once filled with many demons and controlled by demons and 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 and, and the people come back and they're like what what happened here and that's us that's us tonight and so look for the opportunities i'm telling you i i tell you guys this all the time everything that gets preached what, what whatever you hear everything you read on your own and what you study on your own here's what men and women of god do god give me an opportunity to live this out you read something like, wow, god give me an opportunity god I, this seems hard and difficult to me it seems foreign to me and i don't know if i can do that but god give me that opportunity so that i can be obedient to you god it feels a little foreign a little strange for me to step out i don't know if i have that boldness but god if you give me that opportunity i will take that step of faith and i will do it that's what god is looking for in us for us to live out the word christianity isn't about us just coming here and you know let's hear a good sermon and let's have a good time and let's have a good meal and you know we have a great time and all that is good but the emphasis on why we gather is to learn what it is to be men and women of god and to live that out every day god give me that opportunity and so as i close here i still got three pages to go but i'm going to go ahead and close here <laughs> and so <laughs> and so jesus as we close this out here today uh jesus would bring this man in his right mind and then he would send him on his way the people can you imagine the people seeing this man coming, right? Uh, when, when, you know, the, some came back and they saw him in the front line. But now Jesus says, now I want you to go. Go into the village. And can you imagine? Can you? Oh, no, man. Everybody, here he comes. Here he comes, everybody. Run. Hide your bed. Hide your coins. Hide your gold hoops. <laughs> And here he comes, and, and, and they can see him from a distance, and they're like, oh, dang, here comes that fool. Oh, man. And they're like, but wait. <laughs> There's something different about him. I don't know, man. He's still got all the cuts and bruises and scars. Yeah, but check it out. He's got clothes on. He's normally <laughs> naked. He's wearing something. I'll tell you, there's something different happening about this man. And so Jesus would send him back into that place. Kids are probably hiding behind their moms. Doors are slamming. People are like, what's going on? And then all of a sudden, he opens his mouth. And you realize there's something different. I'm going to close with this last story. Short story. Little Jesse, east side from our church, with a tattoo. You know, you see him, and, 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 and you know, he looks, he looks the life, you know? And then you hear him talk, and you're like, hold on, man. <laughs> This ain't jiving <laughs> because there's this sweet guy that's talking about love and, and, and uh, you know, that's his heart. His heart is love. And so that's what they've seen in this man as he makes his way back into the village. They're like, oh, man, here he comes. And then he opens his mouth and they're like, what? It's a whole different person. And so I pray that when we open our mouth, that when we have something to say, that people recognize and realize that's a whole different person because then it gives you the opportunity to share why only god can change that heart i know i said i'm closing but i really am but listen <laughs> behavior right that like when, when, when you live a certain way you get this behavior pattern 15 years right and you become this awful person right or is that just me and so you're, you're just this person, and you're ugly to be around, right? So you would think to undo all of that, it's going to take some years to undo, like, like the same way you got there. Now we got to undo all this. But see, not in the kingdom of God, because God is in the position of changing hearts. And, and he completely changes the heart of a man and of a woman 
where it can happen in an instant, where all of a sudden, man, that you just can't do this, you can't act, you can't talk. I mean, everything is different. There's now love and, 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 and the hatred is gone. And that's because that is the power of a changed heart. And that's what God did for this man that was possessed by demon activity, however long it took for all of these demons to control him. In one minute, demons are cast out and the heart is changed and the man just wants to be with Jesus. Amen. And so that's us tonight. God, you changed my heart. I just want to be with you. He just wanted to be, and, and, and God says, sorry, man, you can't just follow me all around and just hang out with me. I know, I know it's sweet here. And that's how we feel sometimes. Sometimes we go to church and I'm like, man, I just want to stay here. Yeah, this feels so good right here. I just want to stay in church all the time. I want to just be in God's presence. And God says, all oh, that's good, but you got a job to do here. There is a world that is dying in their sin, and you have the answer. Now go forth and preach my word. Amen? Amen. Let's give the Lord a This service here tonight, this is the story of Legion, the demonic oppression of possession was upon this man's life that Jesus in an instant delivered, changed his heart, set him on fire, gave him a position of evangelism and used him to bring a change to his city. So tonight, maybe you are not born again and we wanna give that opportunity tonight to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and as your personal Savior tonight. And so if that's you tonight and you want to accept him, I want you to just simply uh, repeat this prayer after me. It's not just repeating of a prayer, but it's confessing with your mouth something that you believe in your heart. And that is that, you know what, I, I am ready to surrender. I can't do this anymore. I need Jesus. So if that's you tonight, I want you to say this tonight, Heavenly Father, tonight I come before your presence I recognize tonight that I am a sinner, and I recognize that I am in need of a Savior. And so tonight, Lord, I submit, I surrender, I commit my heart to you, and I invite you into my life so that I can be born again, not of the flesh, but of the Spirit, as your word speaks of. I believe that you sent your son Jesus. I believe he died on the cross, and I believe he rose on the third day, therefore conquering death, the grave and taking my sin and nailing it to the cross and covering it as a sacrifice with your precious blood therefore forgiving me of all my sins i accept you as my lord and as my savior in jesus name amen so tonight we're going to close over the message in a word of prayer and uh, <clears throat> see where where we can find application um, for the word that was spoken tonight. Lord, how would you have us um, to live out this word? There's, there's so much in, in God's scripture, and, and depending on where we're at in our life um, is where the Holy Spirit would lead us and speak to us as individuals. That's the thing about the Holy Spirit, is he comes and he speaks to us as an individual. And so, Father, tonight, oh, we thank you for your word, God. We thank you um, for the power of salvation and the power of deliverance uh, that we read about right here in your holy scriptures god it brings hope to us uh, because we have family members that seem to be so far away from you that seem to be so distant from you that seem to be at a place where they want nothing to do with you and they're just going about their lives and and we have no idea god we, we think they are so far from you and we have no idea about that divine appointment that you have set up, that you have placed, where they are going to have an encounter with you. And in a moment, God, their eyes are going to be opened. They are going to be delivered and set free. They are going to know who you are. And so we thank you, Lord, that your word provides this hope to us. Lord, we want to live out your word. We want to be just like this man, how you sent him to go and to tell the people what you have done for him. And so, Lord, we want to be that voice we want to be that witness. We want to be that testimony. And so we ask you to use us. Provide those opportunities that we can be used in such a way as this. Lord, we love you and we thank you tonight. In 
Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give the Lord.